Khalid ibn Walid. He was a man who embraced Islam and became one of the best commanders an army has ever seen. By Allah's leave, he would lead the army to succeed. He could control his steed with his knees. At the same time, hold two swords, one in each, in his speech. He said, it's more beloved to me to march for war in the freezing cold towards my enemies than to be with my virgin wife on the first night. Listen to his description. A mighty torso, tall with broad shoulders. He stood out of all soldiers. He had wise thoughts, eyes of a hawk. When he used to fight or when he fought, he accomplished the title, safe for Allah. Translated in our tongues, this means the sword of Allah. First name Khalid, the son of Walid. He's one of the greatest generals in military history. Triumphs and victories used to kiss his feet. He was blessed with a sturdy physique and eventually his heart yearned for this deen. So let me take you way back, back before this great man embraced Islam. He would stand for kufr. This means disbelief. At the battle of Uhud, he would plan to defeat, to shatter the Muslims, to be wrapped up in white sheets. He kept his eyes keen on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and realized he had the protection from the heavens. When he saw this, so many thoughts were distorted in his mind. Should he leave his warrior's life? Until he had a dream which made him make up his mind. He marched to Medina and left the pagans behind and saw the face of Allah's messenger and said, O oh Muhammad, I testify there is no God but Allah and you're his final messenger. Allahu Akbar. Next, the first war as a Muslim Khalid took part in. The first war as a Muslim Khalid took part in, he started off as a regular Mujahid. The leader of Rome threatened al Medina, the believer's home. So, the Prophet, peace be upon him, sent an army with three generals, Zayd bin Haraifa, Jafar bin Abi Talib, as well as Rawaha, and said, if those three are martyred, leave the decision to the other Mujahids. So they set out. 3,000 Muslims to meet at least 200,000 Romans. They met on a battlefield. Remember, this was real men and this battle was real. They reached for their swords and their spears. Swords hit spears and spears hit swords. Arrows hit shields. Zayd was killed then hit to the floor. The Muslims roared, Allahu Akbar, this is for our Lord. Then Jafar lifted the flag up. He stormed through the enemy. They cut his right hand off. He forced his energy with his left. He held the flag up. They cut his left hand off. He still didn't let it fall down. As his blood poured out, he held it with his legs and what was left of his right and left. He took a final and fatal blow. So hence, next, Rawaha's hand clenched the flag that he was stabbed to death. The flag of La ilaha illallah had now fallen down to the ground. So of course the Romans thought they caught the Muslims now. Then, and only then, Thabit bin Akram swiftly lifted the flag up. This was intense war as blood poured and men roared. He offered the flag to Khalid. Khalid humbly put his hands up and backed off. Thabit bin Akram looked in his eyes and said, By Allah, take this flag into your hand. For this duty there is no other man. Khalid ibn Walid took the flag in his hand. He took the lead and fought so fiercely. He managed to break nine swords that day. He thought of a plan that forced them away. His warrior tactics managed to make the Romans panic. So of course the Muslims gained victory. This is only part one, 
Not even half of the saga of this great Sahaba Khalid ibn Walid One of the greatest generals in military history I relate to you the stories of those that gripped this deen May Allah bestow his mercy on Khalid ibn Walid Ameen